Hello and welcome, this is Bulldog Games and today we're streaming live and we're going to make a drug simulation game on Unreal Engine. Uh, we're going to do this live, probably about an hour stream, um, but today is just specifically the basics to get the, the project um, where it needs to be to start in, in, implementing systems. So I'm just creating a game folder, I'm going to grab the third person character and pop it in there and same with the third person game mode now this isn't going to be an online game we haven't i don't think i've got weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks to get that done oh yeah that's fine um this is going to be a single player game this there there is a few sorry if you can hear that squeaking that's my that's my dog <laughs> he's uh eating his burger um there are going to be a few um hiccups along the way but yeah we will we shall see how we get on um, I'm just organizing my my folder so we can have a few so I mean understand where everything is I haven't streamed for a while so I'm gonna be a little bit rusty but um, I am happy to uh, stream every week and get these built so in the background you're probably gonna hear my dog Yeah, he's uh, making a hell of a lot of noise at the moment, but yeah, we'll see how this goes, and we'll get this cracking. So we've got a blueprint folder. I like to set colours. Um, the reason for that is obviously blueprint. I like to be blue, hence blueprint. Um, and then we're going to have obviously widgets and things like that. The first thing we're going to need is a character. So I thought we can work on that. Um, I'm going to try and I'm going to try and get this done. Um, as cheaply as possible. I'm happy to. Um, I'm happy to put a bit of money into it. It's, 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 it's not an issue. But I think we should go with this adventure character here. Let's have a look. See, but um, I don't think I've actually got any more. There is a couple that I've got um, that I've bought, uh, but they're just ones like a apocalyptic ones, a military yeah, apocalyptic character. Um, Yeah, I think we're just going to use this adventure character, so hopefully we can we can add it to that. Um, so we'll get that all set up. Oh, we don't need the multi-trace system on. Go away. That's what I was working on before. So that is a free asset that I'm going to be bringing out. Um, I'm going to give to all my viewers. Uh, we're coming close to a thousand subscribers now, so yeah, it should be good. So soon we will be on the ball of um, getting this channel monetized. So did that pop in? Yeah, man. So we're going to slot him into the game folder, move that over there, get that all cracking. gone there you go renaming the asset thank you very much so the good thing about this character um, is that I probably will change it before actually because I'm going to build this and get this released on Steam I do have a game on Steam it's called um, Overrun it's a zombie killing game um, and I'm in the middle of building another game as we speak but these simulation games they're, they're, they're pretty much quite quick oh it crashed Send and restart, please. Um, they are quite quick to build. They're not, I wouldn't say you can build them in, in, in a week. Um, probably a few months. You could probably, if you if you put the timing, you can get them correct um, and bring them out on early alpha so people can test, uh, bug test them and that. Um, so yeah, let's just wait for this to load back up. No, we don't need the Mega Scans plugin for now. Got to update that to an uh, Unreal Engine 5. It's at uh, a minute, it's 4.7. No, there is no particular reason why I'm not using the newest Unreal Engine, just specifically because I don't, I don't need it at the moment. So we're going to stream here for around about an hour. Um, yeah, we're going to see how it goes and. Yeah, go from there. Uh, 
Um, there's many, many, many tutorials on my channel, so if you get stuck with anything in Unreal Engine, um, you might be able to find a, a video on YouTube, on my channel, to help you out with that. So, let's wait for this to load. For some reason it crashed, I don't understand why. See, normally in a video I can skip this, but what can I say? I can't skip it. Down in the corner of my stream, you can see that's my dog. Uh, I used him as my logo. That's my bulldog. That's my boy Ernie Bear. So, yeah, let's just skip that. Let's get this up and running. Come on. I'm ready to cold. But, yeah, that's my boy Ernie Bear. Um, in the corner, I used him as my logo because I thought he was... Uh, so we're gonna have to keep this man here. Fuck it. All right, game folder, blueprints, first person, cat, third person character. It takes so long to set up once you've opened up a a, a um, thingy. So <coughs> we need to get the man. So I want the man fully. Thank you. Um, He's probably going to need, uh, he won't be able to use the, um, the animation for, the only animation one he's going to be able to use is these, I think this is Unreal Engine 4, I think, I think, so, I don't think he's going to be able to use Manny or anything like that, I don't think, nope. Um, If he, if he can't use man, uh, money, he's not going to be able to use Quinn. Do we actually have any assets for him? Oh, yeah, we do. We're third person idle, first person jump, run, walk. Uh, maybe we can get that set up. So let's create in the game folder um, a blueprint for player. Um, again, I like the player to be maybe, I don't know, yellow. Just it's easy to grab, you know what you know what's um what folder them in. So what was I doing? Oh yeah, we need to go for an animation blend space one D and we're gonna use the UE4 mannequin skeleton and we're gonna call this walk slash walk, walk underscore one underscore blend space. Open it up, and pretty much for this horizontal, we're just literally going to put speed because that's all it is. We ain't doing a directional thing yet. We will do that as we go, and around about three hundred, I would say. Uh, no, let's probably go to four fifty, um, specifically just for the fact that. So obviously the first one's going to be idle. So just snap that to that. There we go. And then around probably here, I would say walk. So probably halfway between this box, I would say walk. And then at the end, I would say one. So if you hold control down, you can actually get him to start walking. There we go. He's sort of, now he's sort of going into the one. Okay. So maybe that's a little bit fast. But then that no, seems all right. It's all, yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to pause that here. And we are going to save this. So in this folder, we need to add a new folder and call it animations. We're going to drag him into there. We're going to open up this, and we're going to create a animation blueprint. And we're going to use the Unreal Engine Five blueprint, and we're going to call this Player Animation. So on the app, on the app pose, we need to create a new state, and a new state machine. We're going to call it a local, a local, and from here we're going to literally put a default slot. The default slot, so you can use montages. Like I said, it's not it's not very hard. Okay, 
Now in the local we need to pull from here and we need to create a new state. And this one's going to be called idle. And then we need to pull off this, create a new state again. And this one's going to be called walk slash one. And we need to pop that back into there so they sort of go. We will do the jumping, but we don't need to do it at the moment. Um, the idle, we're literally going to pop in the idle. So this is nice and slow. Done. Thank you very much. Go back to local. The walk one is going to be the blend space we just created. And it's going to ask for a variable for speed. So we're going to right click and create that variable. Let's save. Go back to local. Nope, we need to go event graft. So we need to get event, blueprint, uh, initialized animation. And then from here, we need to get cast to our third person character. And it's going to be try and get player pool owner. We're going to dupe, we're going to promote this and get the third person character. I always put them in a ref. I don't know where it is. Then from here, we're going to get the um, the plan player movement. No, site movement. Character movement. And we're going to promote that to a variable as well. Okay. And then obviously, bang that in the ref folder. Now, what we need to do off this animation, off this uh, update animation, is we need to pull in the third person character oh not set we need to get well we need to get this one and if you right click this you convert it to a valid get so you get it open like this thank you very much and we're gonna put a sequence here sequence now off here we need to get the character movement and then we need to get the velocity of that okay so we need to get the velocity and then promote to a variable. So we set the velocity. Okay. Easy peasy from now on. Easy. Easy work. Nothing to it. And then from here we're going to get, if we type in Y. Uh, I can't remember what it is. I think it's X and Y, I think. Is it length? I think it's length. I think it's length. Been a while since I've done this. There you go, vector length for x and y. And this is gonna go into our speed. So we're gonna set our speed. Okay, that's that's literally so now we know is how far we're going. And then the next one, uh, I can't really remember. Let me quickly go into the the character many animations and grab this one. And we'll literally copy this. So we'll copy this and then change it. So control C. Thank you, Manny, but you can fuck off now. And we'll paste you in there. Oh. Right, so this ain't gonna be ground speed, this is gonna be the actual thing speed. And this isn't gonna be the movement component, this is gonna be character movement, because obviously we named it different. And what we're gonna do is should move here, we're going to right click and create a variable for that. I know. As easy as that. We're gonna save that, we ain't gonna worry about the jumping at the moment, but we're gonna save that. And that should work like that. We'll go back to the local on this one. We double click it opens it. We literally want to be able to say that it should be able to move. And then go back to the local and then on the way back we want to go should move and then put a not boolean in front of it. So if it's coming back, then we should not be able to move. And it's easy as that. And that is our animation blueprint done in around about six minutes. Well, I think it's actually been five minutes. So now we compile this, click back on our mesh, go to our any blueprint and go to our animation, which is player animation blueprint. There you go. So if we play this, which I don't think it says, yep. As we walk, he's going to walk. Okay? So now he's going to do what he wants. He ain't going to do the jump yet. But, yeah. Another way as well is I want him walking side to side. I don't want him walking like an old fucking Nintendo game. So, easy to fix. Third person character up here. Character movement. Um, I think it's character movement, I think. 
Yeah, yeah. Use control up desired rotation and rotation, rotation to move them. Keep that one ticked on. Keep them both ticked on. Maybe not. Sorry, it's my bad. What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just guessing here, lads. I'm just guessing. Uh, we need to get rid of that other one. Alright, we'll take There you go. And that should walk side to side. There we go. So now he walks side to side, he jumps, and he moves with the camera. That's exactly how we want this. We want him to quickly run, walk, jump, and shit like that. Okay. Um, we now need to just quickly add a sprint in so we can run and walk, which is super, super, super easy. We're going to literally open up our project settings, which is file, no, which is edit, product settings. We're going to go down to inputs, input names. We've got jump, but we want sprint. Okay, and if you click on this little button, you can click on the button that you want. I always have sprint a collapse lock. A lot of people have it as um, as a shift, um, but it hurts my finger. <laughs> so I just have it as that. Anyway, this automatically saves. We can get rid of this. Go to third person character, event craft. And I like to grab all this and move it over here. So every time we open it, it doesn't get in the fucking way. Right click and type in sprint. Nah. We need to set it, so we need to go to character movement first, max speed, and we need to figure out what is the max speed for this. So him running, the max speed is 45, so let's try 250 and see if he walks on that. Yeah, so it isn't, so yeah. So he's walking on that. So we keep that as that. So when this is pressed, this sprint button, we need to grab the character movement and set the max walk speed. So this is easy, easy coding. Easy coding. Okay? And we want to set that to 400. And then just con control D and duplicate that. You can, you can pop that in there and just use the same node if you wish if you want to keep it a little bit more tidy just push it like this and then this goes back to 250 so on press it's 400 on release it's 250 okay so as we walk in we hold shift he runs let go shift he walks okay next thing probably is uh, a stamina bar um, so that's probably the next thing that we're going to need to implement so pretty easy. So back to third person character. Let's get a variable, and we're going to call this stamina. Oh, stamina, and we're going to use it as a float. Okay, we're going to control save, and then edit it and keep it as one. Put this in player underscore info, so we keep everything together, so it doesn't get start getting. Okay, so the stamina is is his. Um, on one so how we want this to work is pretty simple so we need to every time we press spin yeah we need to let it go like that and then put a delay in here okay so when the sprint is being pressed Every time the print, just every time he sprints, we want to remove stamina. So we need a custom event. And this is going to be remove underscore stamina. Pretty easy, eh? Okay, and what that's going to do is we're going to get the stamina. And we're going to take away how much stamina we actually use. So in my game, I want to be able to upgrade this. So I want to duplicate this and promote this to a variable. And obviously put it into player's info. And this one here, I want to be able to, um, obviously uh, instant editable here as well. I want this to be stamina drain, okay? Yeah, and uh, 
so for example if we want it to drain one a second then it'll drain one a second okay so you just literally put 0 0.1 it will drain one the one tenth so it ten times of this running the stamina will be drained okay so if you want it to be more so 0 0.2 of it running um, you could do that yeah so it's drained within five parts and then obviously as you buy perks to get better and get more healthier in the game or whatever way you want to do it you get better at running you can um, lower this number you can set this number in game by buying something in a shop or something like that so if you if you bought a red ball in a shop for example um, you can put your stamina drain to 0 0.05 for five minutes so you can run more and that's how I like doing it okay so we need to then set the stamina okay but how this needs to work is that if the sprint is being pressed we need to create a boolean for this so if we create a boolean and then rename and put using stamina okay now we need this to run as many times as possible okay so we need to remove this every time so remove stamina if we put a delay in here so every zero uh, let's put every one second every one second of sprinting yeah it's going to lose one stamina and we're going to get it on the event tick but what the event tick is going to do the these become very very greedy for your resources so I'm specifically just going to put a branch and I'm going to put it as using stamina okay so if the, if the using stamina is false we're going to do something in a minute but if it's true then we want to do the remove stamina so we want to grab the remove stamina okay so if this is true then we want to remove stamina now we need to create another custom event and call this regen stamina okay and it's going to be exactly the same but again we're going to literally control D this so you duplicate it and if it's not pressed then we want to do the regen stamina so this needs to be a plus so this needs to be a plus this needs to go this needs to go which is stamina drain okay and then we need to promote this to a variable put it in ref of you know put it in player info obviously and call this stamina oh that's not how you spell stamina though. stamina regen okay and then obviously we want the regen to regen 0.1 okay so you can change your fill around with these but you know this 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 sort of works for me okay so every one second it'll regen and then obviously um, at the end here we can check the stamina here so we need to go is greater or equal to one if it is that's a branch if it is then we need to set using stamina the false wait is that the right way around wait right so when pressed we're going to be using stamina so stamina set when pressed we're going to be using stamina okay and that's what we're going to be doing and then off here we're going to be setting it to not using the stamina okay so now when we're released we're not using stamina all right but this needs to be uh this needs to be another boolean 
and called stamina four question mark we're going to compile we're going to save that and then we're going to pull out of here set the stamina to full which means that that is going to stop the regen so we're going to branch this we're going to put stamina full here okay and if that's true so if we're coming off false and the stamina isn't full lose stamina we need to set it there so stamina set stamina to isn't full um, so if the stamina is full then obviously don't do anything but if the stamina is false and it's not full then we want to uh, regen stamina okay and as easy as pumpkin pie so we're going to drag that up there that tick's going to run every second but it's going to get to this regen and it's going to get to this and it's going to wait a second before it's running so it's got to run the whole code before it's finished so it's running on a it's running on a on on a on a one second timer so we've got the sprint down we've got the remove stamina and we've got the regen stamina here so i'm gonna grab this and comment this and call this stamina regen slash drain and we're gonna bubble it and it's gonna fuck off somewhere over there okay maybe change the color of it I'll move I like the blue there we go well the black the black's nice if you if you like the black the black's nice right so the event tick can sit up here there'll be plenty uh, maybe might be more maybe grubby than things like that on there but we could just literally just jump off here and put a branch in and put uh, is planted. If no, then go to this one. If it, then go to this one. Do you know what I mean? So it's just you know we can we can work it out like that. So we've got stamina drain, stamina regen, and using the stamina is going to go going to stay. Player info, and both of them are going to be uh, instant editable. Okay. Going to compile this and save. We're now going to go back to the third person map. Go to our content folder, user interface widget blueprint. The first one's going to be called uh, main underscore HUD, and then the next one is going to be called stamina. Or no, the next one is going to be called uh, player uh, vitals. I don't think it's say but vitals, but uh, to do. So I'm in the main HUD. We need a, a just a canvas panel. That's literally all we need is a canvas panel. Get that in there. Compile. Save that. Third person character. Then on begin play. We get you can just create that. So on begin play. Create widget. And the widget is going to be the main hub. The only player is going to be self. We're going to promote to variable. Call this main hub. Main hub. So we can reference it, that's exactly what we want, and then we're gonna add it to viewport, uh, to, to viewport, there we go. And then I like to right click, duplicate, collapse the function, and put uh, HUD, there we go, done. Maybe put, if you hold S down and click, it puts a sequence in, so it does this, this shit first. So you put your cast in, and your HUDs, and your shit up there, and then you go down, and do your other little bits and bobs. Yeah, any ho, right. Half hour in, good. We're making progress. Right, so now what we need to do is get rid of that HUD because we don't need it. Get rid of the animation blueprint, get rid of the walk speed, and let's open up the plate of variables. Nah, this needs to be a size box. So we're gonna drag a size box in. We're then gonna drag a boulder in. Oh, that's nice, what boulder, Adam. We're then gonna drag a boulder in, and we're gonna fill screen to desire. Nah, the size box needs to be widthed and override, so I'm gonna probably go 250, not that not that big, 150, but probably 50 here. Oh, fuck off, no way am I doing that. That's way too small, 30, there we go. 
Now, the border, I want to be a blue. Let's go for blue. No, that is not. That's content, so let's go for blue. Change the alpha. Bump, and then in here, we're going to get a progress bar. And we're going to slot it in there. So this is the stamina. Don't necessarily have to be that big. Um, we could probably make it a little bit thingy and probably add a horizontal in here. Right. Okay, so that just do for a minute. So alright, let's get rid of that progress bar. Let's bring the horizontal box here because it can only have one. The horizontal box is going to have an image and it's going to have a progress bar. Yeah, there we go. It's going to be fill and we're going to make it uh, this big and then like that. There we go. And then this image, I'm going to show you where I get my images from. Oh, message. We get my images from, yep, that's my name, not where it at. Uh, we get it from icon8.com. So let me just bring it over here. And we just want literally one for stamina. Stamina. And we'll probably could use something like that. Uh, let's fuck it, let's use something like that. So you can change the color to a white. Download the jogger, download the free. I always use them. And then, third person, we're going to create a folder for widgets. Keep it all nice and organized. Grab these two. Oh. Drag them in there. And then we're going to create one for textures, which is images. And let me just quickly get that image. open up the text folder first, drag that into there, there we go, right click, rename and call this stamina underscore icon, okay, so we can save that, go to the player vital, click on this, go to brush, change this to the stamina icon, not the boulder, the image. So this progress bar is going to be filling in blue. I want it a bit darker blue than that. Um, just so you can sort of tell where your stamina is because obviously the background is blue. So now what we need to do, we now need to connect this player vital to our third person character, which is on pre-construct, we're just literally going to cast it because it's not going to it's not going to affect it that much. We're just going to cast to the third person character. We're going to pull off here and get player pawn. Lovely jubbly. We're going to right click and promote to variable. And then obviously bang it in ref. Good habit to have that. Telling you. So go back to the design. Click on the progress bar which is the stamina bar. We're going to call it. Okay which obviously that's what it is. And then this is the stamina image. Okay, and we could duplicate this for health as well and, and, and other shit like that. Um, no need to have it blue, don't be whatever color you want. But on the stamina bar, we're gonna bind this third person to stamina. Control, save. We go back to the main HUD, and if you come down to user created and get player vital, you can see it's here. So we're gonna make this a little bit bigger. Why is that so small? Let's see how, see how small that is. That's very small. Does it work? There you go. It's starting to work. And now it's starting to generate. And one again. And now it's starting to generate. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. 
Alright, we're gonna have to uh, make that a little bit bigger. And this player vials. Um, so maybe the size box, let's make the size box 250 by 60. Um, this horizontal box needs to be filled. Uh, this stamina bar needs to be filled. Whoa, John. This needs to be filled. Not that big though. Uh, so does this. Stamina bar. Hmm. to be that big so yeah, yeah we're gonna base the padding on the top of 15 and the bottom of 15 so it isn't actually that big it's a bit smaller and we're gonna make this 32 maybe there you go control save main hud a bit bigger for you there we go now to move this about uh, we want this one down in the corner but make sure you anchor it if you don't anchor it properly anyway, um, it moves around the screen when people have different size screens. So you, you anchor it and uh, you don't have an issue. Oh, there you go, it's at the bottom of the screen. You run, it's going to take the stamina away. And obviously, when the stamina hits zero, we're still running. Okay, we should be going back to walking. Okay, and it's not regening once the stamina hits zero because it still believes that it's running. Okay, so that's two little bugs that we need to figure out here. So back down here, so obviously, um, pressed, we now need to check to see um, if the stamina, so let's grab the stamina, so from here, if get, if stamina is less or equal to zero okay we want to hit a branch and if that's true then we want to put the these should be functions really but we're gonna we're gonna do them like this so we, we then want to set max walking speed so control C control V Either way, this is true. Just set max walking speed to 250, and we need the uh, character movement. There we go. Um, and then obviously, we then need to say that we're not sprinting, so we need to control C this and control V this, okay, to say that we're, stop we're stopping sprinting. Um, and then we want to run the regen stamina. Okay, so then we want to regen stamina. Right. I don't think we need to do that. No, we don't need to do that. So obviously it's getting triggered for that, and then it's going to start what's it called in that. So hopefully now. If we run and it wastes all our stamina, it should automatically stop us and we should be walking, which is not. We have to re re click. Okay, so we have to put to remove stamina here. Right, so let's cut that. Bring this down here. So stamina isn't full. We'll go to branch and we'll do everything the same. So stamina isn't full. We're not using stamina anymore. Because um, we're going to be setting it to that. Okay. So it gives you a chance to move back so <coughs> I hope this works 
<laughs> Me starting this easy. There you go, no walking. And we're starting to reach out stamina. Okay. Then we go again, because now we've got stamina. And it stops and now walking. What was the other bug? What was the other bug? I can't remember what the other bug was. What was it? Can't remember. I can't remember what the other bug was. Can we just fix both of them? Did we just fix both of the bugs? I think we did. Oh, okay. Right, so this is our stamina regen. We'll stick this up here and begin play can go above it, and then begin tick can go above that. So this here can fuck off up there. So you don't need that in a bit. <coughs> so we've got the plowing built, we've got the stamina in done. The next thing is probably see if my fag and have a feel about this the next thing probably is <coughs> a little inventory system um, but we're going to need the whole stream for that not just the uh, 15 minutes that's left on this stream um, so I'm going to start saying can then have to finish it on the next stream so saying it's going to take us around about 15 minutes if not 20 minutes so what do I think <coughs> right, so we've got the sprint and the stamina back. Um, hmm. See, I can't even do the transport because the first one you're going to start on, you're going to start on foot. Now, do we do the NPC? So, if we go back to the game folder. Um, these widgets, so this new folder and put NPC N N P C. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to change the colour of that to red because normally NPCs are evil, but not in this game. So we're going to open up this and we're going to create a new blueprint class and I want these to be a pawn or a character. Now the, the, or an actor, we don't want it to be a pawn, maybe an actor, maybe, let's, yeah, let's put it down as an actor, we're going to call this master, underscore NPC, and this NPC we're going to add a static mesh to, and we're going to add a box collision to, and the static mesh, I think I'm probably just going to use the. It's going to be a skeletal mesh, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be a skeletal mesh. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Add a skeletal mesh. And then add a box collision. Because you want the. little mesh I want to use the the full man here so let's bring him actually down to the ground which is there and then bring him 90 degrees that way now the skeletal box we can move up whoa job there we go so this is the box that's gonna be a and we're gonna have it all the way around him I'm um, just so you can go up to him He's going to talk to you. Um, there was a system on here, but he's going to be sat in his pants. And we're going to add the the blueprint, which is the player animation blueprint, which is an idle blueprint. Okay. And then above his head, I want to add a widget. So 
So above the skeletal mesh is head, I want to add a widget. Nah. The widget, it needs to be a... No, not even that. No, not a widget. Uh, text. Or an image. Maybe an image. No, text. Text it is. Text renderer. Okay. And put him under the skeletal mesh and drag him out above his head. Okay, this is literally just to say, hey, I have a mission for you. Or it could just be an exclamation mark. Let's just put it as an exclamation mark. There we go. Okay, and I want it to add to his head. So let's put it on his head. Where's his head? Type in head, Adam. There we go. So let's real time this shit off and let's move this to his head. Oh, for some reason, his head's over there. But we'll work with that. Boom, boom, 90 degrees. Take the snapping off. Bring it out above his head. And let's just make that text a little bit bigger. So let's go 32. And what this is, is this is to say, you have a question mark. Now, the text material, we want the render color to be like a yellow or something, maybe. Oh. I'll save, let's drag him into the world, and let's see what he looks like when we walk up to him. So he has a question mark above his head, which means he's someone that we need to talk to. He needs to come up a bit as well, so NPC. Let's just grab everything from skeletal mesh and bring them up. <laughs> Control Z that, we actually need to put a snap on, so let's just actually bring him up. Let's see if he's sitting in the ground there. Yeah, one more. <laughs> Please, just do what you need to do, mate. Shut up, you set the dog off. It's half ten, mate. Turning your game off now. Shut up. What? What? Right, my kid coming down sorry about that I had to uh, yeah so what was it doing oh yeah we were just making sure that this NPC is standing on the floor which he's not so let's do this to five and bring him down a tad that should be him standing on the floor uh, no so let's just bring him down by snap by like one Maybe two, there we go. We've got to get this bang on because this, this is the master, so this means everyone's going to be standing like that. Probably one more. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. So now he's standing correctly on the floor, same as my man. Right, so that's good. So that means that he's got, now nah, he has a quest. So, what do we do from here? So the box collision probably is going to be, I would say, at the front of him. Uh, you can come in at the sides, but mainly at the front. Okay. 
and we're going to right click and rename this to trigger not trigger out of our resources trigger talk about red balls cracked mate cracked up right next thing now this box collision we now want now when we see this man so I like these triggers I like setting them to unhidden in game so you can see them around the player so when we walk into this yeah if we walk into this we want the geezer to automatically go stop yeah this is what we want Okay, we don't want to be coming up to him and trying to press E and fucking everything else. We want to literally to be able to walk, and then he sort of will have a camera. So, if we can add a camera to this man, bring him up, bring him up, and spin it. want it to um, we want to display that do you want to do that because that's going to take us away from the game and it's like say you're running away from our bill or you're running away from the police and you run past this geezer it's going to automatically <coughs> try and get you to talk to him so so what I want him to say is Maybe, wait, come here. When we get into a facility, okay? So, if we duplicate this trigger, and we call this trigger, uh, wider trigger, wider trigger, okay? And this wider trigger is gonna be obviously a little, it's gonna be his, um, his thingy of view, okay? So, we're gonna pull this right here. So obviously when we walk into this trigger, we want him to say, hey, come here, come here, got something for you. Or something like that, we can record something and you know, say, hey, come here, come here, come here, come here. Now, this is still not hidden in game, is that massive? Yeah, so if we walk past him like that and he's going, hey, come here, come here. And then you go when you hit this box, you talk to him. Okay, so as long as you're not being, we can do it. You're not being chased by the police and something else. You're going to be able to talk to this geezer. So the wider trigger, when when the wider trigger. So let's go. Right click this, add an event. I'll begin over that wider trigger. Okay. So we want the other actor now so we want it to be able to say uh, so if the other actor is equal to third person character I'm going to put that in a bunch okay and if he is then we want a print string for now, oi, come here. Okay, so if we walk into this trigger now, nah. hello, did I put it on this trigger? No, it should be this trigger. be on third person character game folder blueprint right click blueprint interface and call this uh, MPC in 
interface. Okay, for now, we're not going to be using it. We're just literally going to add it to our class settings. So NPC interface, which we're going to need. Apply or save, play that. And then on the master NPC, get rid of this and pull off this and put does implement interface and it's going to be NPC. NPC. NPC interface and put it into there. If that's true, then we want to print. Okay, so now when we walk past him, hey, come here, come here, come here. And then as we walk out, hey, come here. Yeah, so we want to grab the wire trigger, add another event, and this is end overlap. And it's Gonna be when this geez and that. Control C, Control V. Oh, John, calm down, calm down. Now, other actor does this. Do we want this one to say? Go away then. Okay, but there'll be there'll be different things for it to say. But for now, there's just so. It's okay, come here. Go away then. Yeah. Okay, come here. Go away then. Yeah. Now, wait, come here. We'll come over to him. And when we're in his facility, so we should make it a little bit better, a little bit smaller. So when we're in this facility, this one here, let's make it a little bit smaller. Now, when we add begin overlap on this, the same thing again. Okay, but what we want to do is that if we've hit this trigger, we want to create this as a, uh, a boolean. So we need to create a variable and put um, has already spoken. Yeah? Now, because we don't want it to say the same fucking thing three or four times, so if we get the trigger now, add an event, on can begin overlap again. Control C this, Control V that, clip that into there, put this up. It's all done with things like this. So, on this one, this end overlap, we need to check has already spoken. Okay, I'm going to put it to a branch and click it there. Okay, so if we've already spoken to this NPC and this is false, it's going to say go away. Yeah, but if we go Control D, duplicate that and then put uh, hurry up or something. Yeah. Hurry up, I ain't got all day. Yeah? So if this is ticked, then we want it. So when we hit this, it's gonna say, oh yeah, come here. Yeah. Um we then need another one to say mission accepted. Yeah. <coughs> we need to do exactly the same thing. So we need to get it, put it into a branch. True. If it's false, we haven't. Then it's oh, yeah, come here. If we go into that and we control dupe this, we could change it to you've done that for me yet. So now when we go into the actual trigger, we don't want to go away then and we don't want that. Yeah, we literally just want him to say, um, so uh, on the begin overlap, 
that we've already spoken and the mission is accepted. So we need to pop these down and set them. Okay, so we're going to set these to true and the mission accepted as well. We're going to set the mission accepted to true as well. So it's literally going to be that these are set to true. Now, when we end over that, that trigger, he ain't going to do anything. Okay, he's only going to do sank when has already spoken. Okay, so if we now we go into his trigger box, he's going to say, Oi, come here, go away then. Yeah, Oi, come here, go away then. Oi, come here. But if I go into his mission box, act like I'm talking to him and then walk out of the box. Hurry up, I ain't got all day. Come back into the box. You've done that for me yet. Hurry up, I ain't got all day. You've done that for me yet. Just simple, this is simple, simple coding. This is this is easy. This is this is something that um, Yeah, it's easy. You know, it's 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 it's, it's something that can help. Uh, you know that it's just simple, simple coding. It's just simple, simple coding. You know, like, okay, yeah, you've got to create the widgets, and yeah, you've got to create the voices, and yeah, you've got to do this, but to add a branch in to see if the mission's accepted, if the mission is accepted. So on begin overlap, when you create the widget, you have to make sure that you put the mission accepted in. Whether this mission accepted is on your third person character as a variable, then you, you you call from your third person character to mission accepted and you pop this up here. So it always goes back and reverts and checks that. Um, but the bet for the mission accepted is better off having it on the NPC because you could have four missions going on at once. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, on that bombshell I'm gonna leave this stream where it is. Um I'm glad I'm hoping that people like what they see. There wasn't that many viewers. But like I said, we're gonna to continue to do this. This is gonna be my this is gonna be my baby. This is gonna be my next baby. So yeah, on that bombshell, this is Bulldog Games. This is a drug simulation game that we're gonna build from scratch live. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bulldog Games is out.